from Dallas, Texas, the flash, apparently official, President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, some 38 minutes ago. It was shock. It was just shock. I was in some class, I'm not sure if it was algebra or Spanish or something like that, and the news came over the intercom. The principal came on the intercom and um, gave us the news that a shooting had occurred. They didn't know yet that, uh, that uh, Kennedy had died. I can remember going to my room and weeping, just weeping. It's difficult for me to describe the feeling that I had at that time. It felt like I was hollowed out, like uh, there was no hope left in the, in the world. I remember the following days as just moving from church to television, church to television, uh, just trying to follow this as, uh, uh, as a nation. I remember my parents being very proud that they voted for and that Kennedy won, that he was the first Catholic uh, to be uh, uh, elected president. For young people, especially about my age, graduate school at that time, there was a great deal of existential struggle with that assassination. It was almost as if uh, the society, our society, had lost its innocence. But there, it just felt uneasy, and especially since we were kids of the Cold War. We were the kids who in grade school were hiding underneath our chairs uh, in drills, and although uh, you know, we didn't know it at the time that they would arrest someone very quickly, I think a lot of us were concerned that was this a big plot? Was this, you know, was this communist taking over our country? So, uh, you know, our young minds were, were running wild there, in addition to simply being in, in shock. This sense of something, you know, the, as people say, the, the, the end of Camelot, of something really quite, quite new and fresh, uh, that, that this young, uh, Catholic, uh, vigorous uh, president is, uh, is, is shot. One of the reasons that I felt so desolated at that time was because I had met John F. Kennedy about four years earlier. I had a chance to talk with him. And I must tell you that I was awed by the matinee idle handsomeness of the man, by his charm, uh, by the New England accent by his ability to make you feel like you're the only person in the world. I can remember him asking about my major, asking about my plans for uh, post-college, uh, uh, my post-college career, and uh, laughing a bit at my uncertainty, and uh, his reminding me that uh, service to the country might be a good way to go. Two or three years ago, I was trying to process what I felt still, and sometimes I process things when I try to put them down in written form. And so I wrote a poem about my feelings. I'll read that because I think it summarizes uh, pretty clearly, pretty vividly, what I went through. It's simply entitled JFK. White teeth flashing and winsome schoolboy smile jaunty and urbane and navy blue pinstripe suit, starched white shirt, deep crimson tie, brushed gold cufflinks, glinting cool and rich in the slant fall sun. JFK shook my hand like it was the only one in the world worth holding, promising cloudless days and Camelot in that firm, confident grip. Then the gunshots. In my mind, I felt again the warm press of his handshake, saw again the dazzle of his boyish smile, heard again his strong voice full of rocky main shorelines and surging Atlantic waves, the hope of Camelot now oozing into nothingness like stale air escaping from a punctured balloon. <laughs>